I took it. summer. It's my first summer being single in a long time. I'm like, I don't really know what it is. And welcome to In the Girls Corner because we talk about shit like this. And, you know, it's not just MMA and fight stuff. And, you know, that is what it's centered around. Mm -hmm. And as such, I am Carrie Stellar, host of In the Girls Corner. Super excited to be interviewing my friend. One of my soul sisters, my soul tribe, Miss Alicia Half Pint Zapatella, the Invicta Adam Weight FC, I mean, mm -hmm. Invicta FC Adam Weight Championship, the champion. Sorry, you were fighting May 21st. Yep, May 21st. Jessica Dalboni. Yep. Are you super excited? I am so excited. I've known about this fight for so long. I'm li I've literally been in a 12 week, 12 week fight camp. Ooh, so long. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've flown out some really good um, training partners to help me prepare for this. I can only imagine who you've had. And I'm excited for this. You know, this is your first title defense, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Who yep. Who isn't excited for that? And then, you know, I'm not going to even ask you what you want to do after because, like, we got to get through this. Mm -hmm. You know, too many people don't live in the moment. And that's why I feel like so much anxiety is in the world because people are either living too far in the future or too yep. uh, it, too much in the past. Oh, completely. And they're never in the present. Completely. I've been, that's one thing that um, I've struggled with in the past, but I've been just living in the moment, like, um, and feeling my body, feeling what I need from today and what's going to get yeah. the best um, out of the day. Like, I actually... When, when into the gym today, I had my first training session with uh, John Chalbeck, and by the end of it, I was like, you know what? I really need a day off today, and my energy levels are I like haven't talked to him room. in fucking forever. How is he? He is phenomenal. He's actually going to come and corner me for this fight. Wait, um, dude, I was, in a, I was in a group chat with him, Tyler, and me <laughs> for a while, yeah. and then I got booted off of Instagram and Twitter, and then... <laughs> It was like literally the next day when they removed on um, DT DJT. I can't, I don't really want to say too much about him. Yeah, we'll get thrown off. Not that I care. But uh, the second they threw him off, I was like, you know what? If they could do that to a sitting president, they could do that to any of us. Mm -hmm. And I said, fuck this. And that's when I split. Mm -hmm. My in the girls' corner is still on Facebook for business purposes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's, yeah, you got it. Of course, yeah. Like, I got to compromise got somehow, yeah. even though it sucks. Um. But I haven't seen him since then, and I I felt like I felt like I was gonna see everybody on Telegram, and I've seen some people. Okay. But not yeah. As many. So I actually train with Childback twice a week. We spar once a week. Love him. Um, Tell him I said hi. I will. He is one of my favorite people ever. He's. Do you know so we still have a bet going? No. He's gonna tell you that like I, he's gonna tell you tell her she has to pay up, but it's there's no. There's okay. no, it's still, it's on the first arrest. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, like, it hasn't happened, so. Did, did you end up seeing his fight on BKFC? No. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Then I me. have never seen a boxer that is so calm. And, like, like this guy threw, like, a wild punch, and John is just, like, like his, like, <laughs> debut. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, his knockout was beautiful. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. He is awesome. He's one of my favorite people. It's so funny because, like, I, I want to see how people are, especially last year was really tough on a lot of people mm -hmm. in so many different ways. And then, like, throw in, we'll just say, I don't even care what anybody gets mad, fuck YouTube, but the elections threw so many people into crises and still yep. is. Yep. Because nobody really knows, nobody really knows what the fuck is going on. There's so many people out there that are like, oh, this is what's going on. And this is what's going on. And like, I'd love to be able to say, I know exactly. But I tell people, if you want to have an idea, just go look at my telegram. Because I put up <laughs> almost all my shit is like factual. You know, sometimes I'll put up something funny, but most of my stuff is like fact checked. And that's what I love about the fact checkers. Because I'm like, dude, that's what I do. As a journalist, you're supposed to have credible sources. Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to be able to back up. Yeah. Your and P the fuck S. Is it like last year coming true this year? Like all of a sudden they're talking about fucking direct energy weapons. We were talking about that last year. Oh, it's now they're talking about definitely. deep underground military bases. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that last yeah. year. Hello. Yeah. Like, oh, we're crazy. No, we, we know what's going on and yeah. it's coming true. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Oh my God. The, the, the movie that Jim Caviezel did about the trafficking, that's going to be, it's not going to, it's yeah. never going to hit theaters ever. I actually mm-hmm. have a copy of it. I'll send it to you. And I okay. tell everybody, I'm like, I would literally, yeah, have it in my, like they told you where to go to download it. There's a couple okay. sites to get it from. It'll never hit the theaters ever. And okay. Jim Caviezel said at a conference because they're all involved. <sighs> yeah. Oh my God. It is so sad how much like literally everybody is involved with it like the second that somebody comes forward oh they're dead yeah everybody yeah just, oh they're, they're suicide yeah they and it's so funny because it's like i try I, I try to stay away from that sometimes because like i'm like all right well you know what that's not that's not to press everybody but like that's i said to my dad today that really there's not much else going on if you look mm-hmm. at the tv if you look at even the programming that's on tv like i'm like oh let me just flip through ancient aliens okay <laughs> now there's the unexplained uh whatever uh-huh. with william shatner i am mm-hmm. loving that it's a cross between that and and other things and then you have uh it's like that and unsolved mysteries which was like a fucking horror show for oh. me yeah oh yeah my mom wants to know why I grew up to be a pedophile slayer and why I want to like see them all in a fire and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, she made me watch like Unsolved Mysteries and A Current Affair mm-hmm. and I forget what the other one was. And like I watched when I was like in sixth grade, she had us watch Silence of the Lambs. Mm-hmm. I remember watching like An Eye for an Eye in seventh grade. My mom made me watch these horror movies that were like based on true stories and shit, and, like mm-hmm. Lifetime movies that were horror ones. I'm like, you turn me, like, I am that commercial. Yes. Or am I watching you, mom? Yeah. Like, I actually never realized until, like, a couple years ago why I'm so into true crime and all this stuff. Like, that's all I watched with my mom growing up. Those are the type of shows that she's into. Oh. And, like, um, so it's like not last... just my mom. Is this, like, yeah. a mom thing? No. And so, like, last year, she's like, oh, my God, I found this new podcast. It's where women, they're drinking wine and they're talking about true crime. And then it, like, it, like, clicked for me. And I was like, Holy shit, it's you. That's where it all came from. Like, I learned it by watching you, Mom. Yeah. And then I, I'm like, me and my, my dad and I are having, like, a political argument. And I'm like, why can't we talk politics anymore, Dad? You grew me up on this shit. You're a politician. Mm-hmm. I used to, like, go to fundraisers with my fucking father. Like, I, my grandparents were at Bill Clinton's inaugural ball. Like, I, and really? my family, yes. There's okay. little things that nobody really knows about me that I still oh. I keep in my pocket for like future references. Like I'm a uh, Democratic committee member. I'm like a chair member or some shit. shit. I know. Me. Who knew That's I would wild. be like a Democrat That's and wild. a chair member, right? Well, you can't you can't create change within something if you leave it. Exactly. So I figured I can never ever create change within the Democrats if I go and become a Republican. So I would say that makes sense. And, Okay. Yes, yes. Lay in bed with the enemy. It's the best way to change them to make them better. Because <laughs> like they, oh we God. all do want the same thing, essentially. Mm-hmm. It's just little minor differences. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, oh, completely. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like right now, my favorite, like I had somebody ask me and totally not even political conversation. We were just like bullshitting. I'm doing his hair and he right away, older guy, you know, about the vaccine. Did I get it? I'm like, no. I actually responded, hell no. It, yeah. it wasn't even like, I didn't even think I'm cutting this guy's hair. He's fine. Oh my He's God. older. Like, I was like, yeah. oh, hell no. So, <laughs> do I look crazy? Um, I went on a date with somebody and things were going great. We're having an awesome conversation. Oh, no. They say that everybody needs to be made to get a vaccine. You know what? Red flag, done. No text back. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, okay, so where did my body, my choice, thank you, now go out the window? Thank you, because it's a vaccine that yeah. has a ninety-nine point whatever. You know, uh, like mm-hmm. let let's call a spade a spade. None of this shit is like we're not just talking yeah. shit. Everything yeah. that we're saying is factual. Yeah, I, I have a very healthy immune system, and I think that people that, I mean, I definitely had it. I just didn't get tested for it. So yeah. instead I stayed home, I quarantined and I got better. And honestly, it was like the stupidest cold I ever had. It was sinus. Everybody in my family had a sinus infection and they all came up positive. Yeah. For COVID. So I believe that I believe that I've had it and um, yeah. I'm a very healthy individual. Thank I you. came out fine. I quarantined. I'm good. Um, I traveled around half the country. And oh, you I... didn't get tested. No. Uh, good no. For you. I didn't yeah. either. Um, so like I traveled shit. around half the country during this, and uh, look at me—I'm perfectly fine. I'm saying, you it, know, like, 
I'm not going to get the COVID vaccine. Like at this point, we are all no. lab rats and yeah. um, there is not enough there's not enough evidence as to what it does long term to your reproductive system. And I want to have kids. I'm not changing my DNA for that. You know what? Off camera, there's like some things that we have to like gross shit that I saw that like they're saying that like, okay, so people don't understand uh, any virus. Pretty sure mm-hmm. viruses shed. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Most people don't understand that concept of a virus. It shed. So it's not really spread by like yeah. Yeah. you talking. It's spread by contact. I don't give a mm-hmm. fuck what anybody says. Uh, I hate to bring up like STDs and shit, but like even herpes, if it's on your arm, it's not mm-hmm. considered a herpes. Okay. Yeah. Unless it's on your mouth, your your like in your Yes. Yes, because people um back in um college would get um mat herpes you, you'd get it from the mat and it wasn't well, and it's not it's, it's a shingle it's considered mm-hmm. so many different things so my thing and i think like the whole world needs to revisit revisit like so many things mental health um mm-hmm. sexual assault in schools because yep. of the age gap that you put like a 14 year old there's sometimes 13 and with 18 year olds yep. and what are you gonna hello uh mm-hmm. hot teachers i just i could go on and on and on major problems and there's so many things that can fix it like um the crisis that, okay bill gates you want to you want to depopulate the planet you really do S- fucking sex education uh-huh yeah sex like that would education that would, hand condoms do wonders. Out. free condoms hand them out wonders. hand them out hand them out yeah. in school hand them out even if the kids blow them up and make fun of them Hand right. them out until they don't, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. Hand them out. Birth control, it's, make it accessible. D- my insurance that's doesn't even cover it. That's wild. Not any of it. Wow. That, that oh, one, no they sense. said they would like cover partial of it because of it's a pill. And I'm like, well, that's really funny because I also take a Deplin, which is like a superfood. Mm-hmm. And it's for people that have, I have an uh, MTHFR deficiency, which is like, I don't uh, absorb a lot of stuff. Oh, okay. So it's an active form of folate, I believe. It breaks the blood brain barrier. Like that's I mean, honestly my life like my nails used to split and crack so strong. It's crazy. It's ever since I started taking this, right? Okay. It's not covered by my insurance. What? Why it's, not? Because it's a superfood. It's not considered a medication. But that makes that makes no goddamn sense. It's a life saving medication in my personal opinion. It's saving me from having you know to take uh more medication than i want to yeah you know i don't yeah. want to be on that much i mean like, like realistically like nutrition is like nutrition should be covered by by your health insurance be. like uh, like if, if you look at kids with... they give folate to pregnant women they were telling me like this is something that it's everybody should be taking an active form of some sort or yeah. another yeah because i mean if you look at people who are depressed if you look at autistic people if they literally just went to a nutritionist there is stuff that they can do scans of your brain they can do food tests and different foods will help not inflame things and, and you know the fact less part? medicine but big pharma so whatever big pharma and then they wouldn't be covered uh under their like uh medicare or whatever they yeah. will take you if, oh if you're not in your medications and stuff if you're not doing what you need to be doing for your disability mm-hmm. then but what why do i have to do what is societal norms yeah like why can't we do what has been done for literally Ever? hundreds of years before pills and all the pharmaceuticals yeah. were um introduced which weren't even Smoke introduced pot. by a doctor Smoke like pot. your body yeah. our, the human body yeah. actually has cannabinoid receptors in it oh yep. you know that <laughs> yep. it's so funny nobody knows this like and turbines and that's why when you mm-hmm. get stuff like <laughs> and I tell people, like, if it's fucking you up, you're smoking too much. If you're having yeah. anxiety, you're smoking the wrong kind. Like, you don't need to take, like, when I take bong hits with my friends, like, I take a monster one, but I know what I can handle. I don't want to take a clodipin. Yep. You know me. I don't yeah. want to take a clodipin. Like, you, you, you know me. I do not want to take a clodipin. I, I take mm-hmm. them to sleep. I yep. can't take them all day long. Mm-hmm. And to be honest with you, I don't look good in orange. 
So hot keeps me from prison stripes. <laughs> it's just not my color. Yeah, like, and honestly, not the new black. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. It is, man. Like, it is so upsetting that as athletes, we can't smoke weed. Like, it's not a performance enhancing drug. It's not. It's not. It helps with almost anything. Like, it helps with um, the anxiety. It helps with um, the inflammation, even. It helps with yeah. literally all of the mental and all of the physical side. Yeah. I tried to roll high. It was pretty funny. I've tried a couple times. It's I, like, become so dyslexic. I'm like, wait, what? What did you want me to do? I'm like, we learned that? Why did we do that, John? I don't even remember. Yeah, you can't. Like, you can't tell me what to do when I'm rolling high, but if you just let me roll high, I do great. I can just do it. That, we were rolling at, uh, he brought me to Sarah's, and Lauren was so funny because she was, I heard her coaching me from the corner, and I was, she was like, Carrie, scissor your legs, and I did perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden, I was rolling with someone else, and uh, John called, like, he was like right there, and I didn't even really notice him. And he said something, and I'm like, Motherfucker, I'm like, I was doing perfect. And you just like literally <laughs> blow up, mess it. And he's like, But Lauren could say it. I'm like, I don't know, mate. I, she's not my coach, like, it's a little bit different. I don't, it's different. This was my first time there. I've never yeah. been there. Yeah, like, we did six live rounds, and I don't even know how many minutes they were. I've never done, I've done like three i'm like John, you should have fucking warned me i mean i i did it it was i rolled <laughs> with caitlin chukagian i rolled with lauren uh brachia you ran mm -hmm. we rolled with her at yes. Sam's house over the summer yes. and i can't remember the other people's a couple other girls it was a couple girls it was nice yeah okay yeah i love it i'm, I'm so yeah. obsessed with jujitsu yeah, i love jujitsu it's actually my favorite um martial art literally it's i would i haven't really done a lot of um muay thai or kickboxing recently mm -hmm. because i can't put on weight so you know that my i'm 113.3 yeah. and i cannot mm -hmm. fucking break that to save my life like <laughs> and i've been i was 135 at one point like mm -hmm. i thought that working out i think i was last year i gotta ask john how much i weighed it was either 115 or like just going over it or like yeah. 118. I was in yeah. that eight in that range. And then like we start working out and I'm thinking muscle, I'm gonna like put on all this number, I'm gonna go up to 125. Muscle. Like I'm <laughs> oh, huge now. Yeah. Remember hell how yeah. skinny I was? Yeah. You got you got some muscles now. You got some lines. I'm jelly. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> like, yeah. I was so skinny. My back is even big now. Like I'm oh. I wait till you see my legs, like I looks 10 times different than last year in that respect right oh, good. But the scale is yeah. like it went down i'm like if that's like, that's odd but you have the, didn't you say the other day that you were like muscle bone and skin like pretty much yeah yeah that's pretty much what i am i'm like literally muscle bone and skin but i'm five five so it looks really weird like, yeah so like yeah because my build is different i have like 98 pounds of muscle on me yeah um my fat percentage is literally like just over like the healthy and amount and yeah. you're shorter yeah. so you wear it differently yep mm -hmm. i don't know how tall rose nama Yunus is but i feel like i resonate more with her length oh, lengthiness completely. completely like um so you rose and tab like you guys all have like the same body type look at that i never had like that i was like so excited oh cool. <laughs> John's gonna be like, your muscles are great on camera. <laughs> yeah, Tad does too. She had that mm -hmm. same same body yeah. uh, body yeah. style. Yeah. And so like funny. Yeah. I've How is she? How is Tab? Tab's phenomenal. We gotta um, get her on. You do. She has her comeback bite coming up. When? Two weeks after mine. Okay, so tell her. Talk to her. I get my get her number for me. Send it to me. Tell her I'm gonna text her, and we're gonna set up an interview. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll then we should add her into the round table. Oh yeah. Yep. I think she would be perfect. Mm -hmm. I think so too. There's like a girl of every type in there, which is uh -huh. awesome. 
if, if, even if we get like other girl, like if you could think of other people that you want to get on and we just happen to have like other chicks on all the time, whatever, it'll be. So I have fun. a friend that you would absolutely love and you would vibe with. Um, her name is Jessica Payne. She, she goes to my gym. I coach her. She's one of my good friends. Bring her on. Let's do it. I mean, there's so many. So I, I, the sisterhood right now is insanely mm-hmm. amazing. It, it the really are... is. And it makes me so happy. I'm so, like watching um, Nina fight. Um, I don't know why I heard it. Mackenzie Jern and Nina. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, now Nunes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Watching their fight and uh, Mackenzie, well, that was a fucking fan, f- phenomenal five and a half second fight. But watching uh, Mackenzie's post fight speech, she was so cute and she was like, you know, she's like, I feel like because we're both moms, it was this whole thing. And she's like, mm-hmm. like you know, they're such great people. And it was just so cute. I'm like, oh, this yeah. is right now. It's so, yes. so, because I'm so used to hearing, oh, I don't like girls. I don't get along with girls. Girls are assholes. Blah, 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 blah. And yeah. That was like forever. It was for so long. And like, honestly, that is the reason why I stuck with Invicta. Like I've had an yeah. I've had opportunities to go elsewhere, but um, I We've love the sisterhood, and I absolutely love Shannon. I think she's great, and I do have to contact her and see. I mean, because I don't know if they're what they're doing as far as. Um, so <clears throat> next fight, they're not going to have um anybody at the show, but I believe after that um, should should be good. Okay, I want to find out where the, the the one after that'll be, and then okay. like, well, I want to definitely get to one that you're on. I I I'm hoping now she'll end up over on the East Coast. That would be awesome. There's talks of us going elsewhere, and you know, Florida would be a great place for her, especially because of what's going on down there. I would take the trip down there in a fucking New York minute. Mm-hmm. Um, if Florida was me, I mean, we have, we, I'm, I'm excited for the future of New York because I said to my friend the other day, we have a really unique opportunity right now with what's going on here everywhere with the political landscape. We have the opportunity to change fucking everything. Mm-hmm. You know That's, what I mean? And like, yeah. let's fucking flip this bitch on its fucking face. Like, yeah. you're okay. So I'm 42. You're 26. Okay. We're yeah, I'm still young. I'm like, yeah. I don't feel like I'm fucking 42. And you know what? Like, we're the people that are gonna be able to make that change. Oh, completely. And I think that um my generation in particular, like we have really opened our mind and we have opened our eyes to just all the Big flaws time. in, in the system. Like I would say that maybe a little younger than me is kind of cancel culture. They have to they have to slow down a little and bit. a little older than you guys what are you what generation are you um i i don't remember but i'm on the cusp of millennials and whatever is in between yeah you guys are not like millennials are different millennials are kind of assholes yep. and yep. then there's you guys and then my niece is like i think she said gen z yeah i'm i'm right on the cusp of like okay. when they switch and I like think, those i'm people... thinking of generation x from the 90s we're the best ones. okay oh no yeah. we were we were the best ones. I'm 97. Generation mm-hmm. X, yeah. We were the best ones until fucking, like, I don't know what happened. I don't know where their, you know, pineal glands got calcified or some shit. But let me tell you something. Some people my age are acting real fucking yes. cool. And I'm like, yo, y'all know better. Y'all oh fucking God, grew yes. up fighting in the streets. And now you're okay. Molotov cocktails. Fuck you. I'll yeah. fight you with my fists. Yeah. I'll still, like, fighting I in the streets. I am 42. I will still fight somebody in the streets. I love don't it. Don't come at me with a knife. Because then, like, they're a knife. You're a pussy. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Definitely. Like, they were also the ones that were, like, going out and, like, raving and, like, the deadheads. And, like, these are the people who should be I'm lucky I'm alive. alive. I fell asleep under fucking pool tables. I probably drank <laughs> fucking, like, I don't even know what I took in the ecstasy pills that they gave, like, that my friends, got. we don't know what was in it. Mm-hmm. It could have been fucking Drano. I don't yeah. know what I took. And somehow, yeah. magically, I'm still here. Yet these bitches now, and I don't know what the fuck. I don't want, everybody's like, why aren't you dating anybody? I'm like, good luck right now, right? Yep. Yep. My age range, complete fucking, I don't know what the fuck happened. Like I said, there are massive people in my age range, all fucked up, everywhere, all over the place. They don't know what they're doing. (laughs) The other guys that like me are way older, Mm -hmm. married. Kids like way <laughs> older. I'm mm-hmm. like, mm, not pulling an ad. Yeah, Cole. Yeah. And then my other option is way 
younger. <laughs> and I had my numerology read it, and it was actually one of the ones where it was a guy's voice. He was like, his voice was amazing. It was so soothing. Okay. And um, it was online, and he like read everything. Mm-hmm. And he said, you're so young at heart. It's no wonder that you attract such younger guys. And sometimes the age gap, the generation gap is just too much. And I'm like, oh, you, my God. You need to find like, a young guy who, like, is okay with it and, like, the age gap and, like, it's just mentally mature. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's so funny because there was a guy on uh, TikTok that, he said that it was something like when the text ones that it said, like, uh, when girls my age ask me if I want to go out on a date. And he, I don't know the song that he had, but he said it said in the corner, but I'm over here drooling over the older women on my TikTok. I don't know why. <laughs> girl, you just made every girl melt on here that's like 30 yeah. and older. Yeah. <laughs> just throwing that out there, guy. You just like did yourself a favor. <laughs> yeah, I told, I was talking to my sister. She's getting divorced. I'm like, dude, let me tell you something. The fucking, you're going to get, like, so much tail from you. She's like, who are you that you even said that? I'm like, I don't know. I'm a throwback. Oh I'm not going to talk like these young kids. I don't even know what that means. But tail. <laughs> you know, that's actually supposed to be for women, from what I understand. Like, women, is like, their tail. I don't know. Anyway, but, yeah, there's so much, like, I'm like, Christy, you're going to have a good summer. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's, it's hot girl, hot girl I mean, it's hot girl life. Hmm? Is hot girl like is it is this like a single girl summer? Is that what they're saying? Yeah, yeah, single hot girl summer. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know if I. I don't know what I want to do as far as like I mean you know me like I'm like if I meet somebody great but like (laughs) I'm not gonna waste my time I'm not gonna waste my energy I'm (laughs) certainly not gonna have some negative ass motherfucker up in my bucket oh yeah definitely like I've I've never really just like dated around I've always just kind of been in a relationship and I'm I want like everything out of my next relationship so i've been going yeah. on dates i've been x and men out like one red flag all right sorry like you don't make the cut so smart. So smart. thank you so smart thank you need you. to do that red flag run yep. red flag mm-hmm. yo that's it red flag run fast like yep. you gotta make up a hashtag <laughs> <laughs> i love it red flag run fast oh that's like, great run bitch he's gonna ruin your life like yes <laughs> yes and like because I've went on dates with guys that, like, I know damn well past me would have been like, all right, cool, whatever. Well, we can have a great life together. But, like, me now, I'm like, Mm-mm, that's not what I need because I see where this is going to go. And so we're good. Oh, yeah. And if it's not good for you, what the fuck is the point? Even just for, like, temporary fun, it's still not yeah. good for your yeah. permanent energy. Uh-huh. And especially in the long run, you don't want that. And <laughs> I tell people, you literally carry people's energy uh-huh. with you. Yep. So, like, why would you want to carry somebody's energy that you don't even like want it? Like, you know, I don't like them. But I'm going to stick around for a little while. Like what? No, that Why? makes, that makes no sense. Like, and, you're like a fucking cat. Yeah. And like, um, so like I've been going on a lot of dates, but like, you know what? They're getting stuff out of it too. Like yep. I'm planting my positive seeds in the world. And I'm dating. changing views. I actually <laughs> love dating. That was I, my favorite fun. thing was going on dates and people mm-hmm. like, really? I'm like, well, I got to know people. I had mm-hmm. a good time. Yeah. It's it's a good I time. Actually, I actually almost met a guy on a date. It was hysterical. I went on a blind date like an asshole. You know, I did the whole dating online. Mm-hmm. Everybody always asked me, what do you think of dating online? I'm like, don't do it. It's the same yep, fucking nope. kind of guys. You will literally see the same guy on there for years. And you're like, yep. you never meet somebody? What the mm-hmm. fuck is going Or is this like a bot profile like do they have fake people like the pro the, the uh, portrait yeah picture yep. people like, yep. is this a real so, person i literally <laughs> I don't ref- even know i literally refuse to date online like don't I do might, mo- most of my like interactions like with new people are online so like i might meet somebody online but like i will never be on a dating site Mm-mm. won't ever don't do that do it again. Again. don't do it it's just yes. a certain kind of people it's a certain kind of guy so like this dude i'll never forget his profile said he was like five eight so i'm five five so i'm like all right i don't wear my heels i don't yeah. give a fuck even if i'm an inch taller than them it doesn't really right. matter so i get out of my car and he gets out of his and he looks at me and he's like you're really tall i'm like you're really short <laughs> 
<laughs> and we were inside and there were fights on. So I was like literally talking about the fights and I was like, oh my God. I mean, this was years ago and I was just going on and on. And there were a table of guys behind us that could totally tell I was not having a good time and they were hitting on me all night. I was like, I feel so bad for this That's motherfucker. Phenomenal. And I was just like, yo, so what's up? That's great. Oh my goodness. I paid for my own meal. I wasn't going to do that. I'm not that kind of an asshole. Hey, that's good. Because I was pretty much on a date with the four guys behind me. I was like, yo, I'm going to try. Should have gotten one of them to pay for your dinner. (laughs) They were so hot, all of them. It was so funny. You never know what's going to happen. This world is a crazy place. Dude, I've been on dates before and like fights are on and like that's got my attention. Like the fights got my attention, but like the guy wants nothing to do with watching the fight. And I'm like, wait. This, this isn't not gonna, gonna work. No, 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 no. Like you know, my no. profession is I'm a I'm a fighter. <laughs> yeah, like how are you not gonna talk about fights? Like now, I mean, being a mixed martial arts journalist was one thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I mean, I always had a respect for fighters, but like it, it was one thing, like because like guys were intimidated immediately. Yeah, dating me, they're like, dude, you're around guys all the time. I'm like, who the fuck is it? Like, trust me, every girl that you right. talk to is around dick, 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 all the time. I'm telling you. And if they say they're not in life. So, like, okay. But it's so true. It's the great. It's just insane. And I was saying to myself, I was told to every girl, too, about it. I'm like, yo, go to fights. You're single, go to fights. Why? There's guys there. Oh, there's guys everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, guys would get intimidated. I wonder why. No, but now it's even worse. So I literally, when like guys, normal guys don't even talk to me anymore. Guys that aren't either in MMA or that's all I get. I'm Mm -hmm. off the phone, you know, off the record. (laughs) 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 Yeah. like We both um, have the same, you know. (laughs) It's bad because like I, I get a lot of guy fighters as well, but like at the same time, like, a lot of regular guys do hit on me because, like, I am very small. But, like, I need to feel like a guy can protect me. They need yes, to be. Yes, that's my problem. I'm they need to be way more badass than if I can't, am. If a, guy can't, if a yeah. guy can't protect me, I'm out. It's yeah, not. No. Mm-mm. No. Like, I don't want to feel like I have to protect my male or that, like, I am the dominant one in the relationship. Like, exactly. sometimes I just want to feel like I'm a girl and, like, take care of me, please. Like, Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's we all do so it's so funny and i get that and that's why like now i'm like yeah is never life is never gonna be the same for me like i'm and i'm not gonna be able to connect with like mm-hmm. regular guys and i hate mm-hmm. it's like so weird to say that but like yeah i'm not yeah i, I don't i'm okay either. with that yep i'm right i've kind of point. always known that though since i was a wrestler but like now it's even harder because I'm not just a wrestler anymore. I'm a fucking world champion mixed martial artist. Like, it just, it just it got so much harder. <laughs> Yo, does it get, like, do they get intimidated by that? Yeah. Yeah. I could imagine. Um, so, like, I met, I met a guy at a bar once when I was out with one of my friends. And um, literally in our conversation, six different guys walked up to me and introduced themselves because they're fans of mine. That's awesome. <laughs> that is fucking awesome. like. Well, like if this this guy's gonna see what life with me would be like already, like y- he needs to know. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Now, see, it's so funny because like I, I don't realize that people know who I am. Like I really don't. I don't. I mean, well, because well, I don't have right now. I'm not really on social media. Yeah. So the ones that I'm on, I don't have a big following. So for me, like I. <laughs> Was it a ego hit a little bit, right? Because like now I'm like have to you know build everything back up, and but now I'm gonna get to a whole new different group of people, right? Yeah. But man, I mean, I feel I feel the same way though about like um. So I have my TikTok and um I have a second Instagram page that are solely just for my spiritual stuff. So like same thing like the ego hit. I'm having to build from the bottom and just gain a following based off of my other path in life yeah i love it i'm like so excited about it it really is for me it's really really awesome but hearing from people that like uh 
when I get messages specifically with it from fighters and people and they're like, no, we don't like, I, they're like, I follow you. I'm like, what? I'm like, but I don't see you following me. They're like, oh, well, I, I'm like, oh, oh, you're that person. So you just look yep. at my shit. I'm like, yep. whatever. Then, then, I'm like, well, now I'm not on social media. So now I don't take it as an insult. I'm like, oh, I, I get it. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh no. But I've had like a couple people that are like, well, that's why I, I really like you because you're so, you're balls out. You don't care. Uh-huh. I'm like, well, no, I do. I care a little too much. Um, but I don't care what people think. So that's, I guess, where they're, you know, really like, it's so funny, yeah. but like, it, it really is. And I put up that video on TikTok because I told mm-hmm. you, like, I've had a couple of my friends message me and they're like, yo, the best was when my mom was like, Carrie, are you queuing on? <laughs> I'm like, did you just, did you really? I'm like, mom, funny. Like, did you ever watch the movie Boiler Room when she throws the poker chips at her son and she goes, is this drugs? Like, yeah, mom, I'm queuing on. That's personally, funny. that's who I am. I'm like, no, but if there is an organization, please sign me up. That is, I, I, I love what they stand for. Yeah, but there yeah, is no organization. Mm-hmm. I had to explain that to her. Mm-hmm. My dad, my stepfather was like, yo, people fucking love you. I'm like, I had no idea what was going on because I was off social media. But my, they don't know my name. They don't know that I'm a famous, <laughs> apparently, big smart large journalist. I didn't know I was no, as known as I am. Um, but Bill Maher has shared my picture. Samantha B has doxed me and, and shared wow. a video of me talking about uh, uh, the Gates and shit, right? Yeah. Uh, Vox has shared my picture. Vice, wow. Glamour UK, Republic something. My picture's worth money on getting shit? images. Wow. Like, no, I'm going to wait to see how much times they sell my shit off before I fucking sue them. Yeah. <laughs> you want to take my image without me, without my right, consent right. as a fucking journalist and say I'm a crazy person? Oh, bitch, it's on. Okay, yeah. Oh, Bill That's, Maher. Fuck yeah. Bill I Maher put me you. on, yeah, a segment with crazy people. Samantha B called me a QAnon mom. I'm like, well, first off, I'm not a mom. And that's a big hit to my heart because, like, you know my situation. And, like, bitch, don't make me come on your show and fucking, like, give you a thing uh-huh. or two about calling right. people moms when they're not. And they can't be like, don't uh-huh. make me do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, Bill Moore, yeah. I never came for you, but I'm going to ask you to please wear your red shoes when I come on your show. <laughs> Dude, and I'm um, going to ask you to explain what your red shoes are. To your <laughs> I love it. Um, I never came for him. I never came for Samantha B. And that bitch who like claims to be this like holier than now, like, you know, oh, she's a comedian. When she first came out, like her entrance to like her show was her walking across train tracks in a skirt with balls hanging out down to her knees. Me wanting to save kids is a problem. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's. Oh, yeah. Makes no fucking sense. No, no, not at all. Um, Look at what they did to Tom DeBlaze. They kicked him off of social media over wanting to save children. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, completely. Um, So I don't know if you saw the video that was going viral on TikTok. So apparently there was a YouTube um, movie that was called The Conspiracy of Everything. Mm -hmm. And. It was taken down, and then I, I refound it. Um, it was four hours long, and you want to know what the bad part is? I spent four hours of my life watching this, and I already knew everything that was in the video. I was going to say, that's the worst part, is that you probably knew all the bit already. Every bit of it. <laughs> Does that just show how much time I've put into this stuff? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it shows how much time we've all had on our hands. Yep. For the last almost, no, full calendar year. Uh-huh. We've all been, like, left to our own devices to sit here and think about life and, like, learn about different shit. And, like, I learned about so, so much. much. Stuff. Yep. And and I'm going to be honest. I took, the last year has been a blessing for me. Like, I me have I loved it. my life. Literally, like, I'm now on the path of everything that I want to be in life. Yeah, and it's because you got to sit down and think about everything you wanted to do. And that really, like, God put us all in a corner and was mm-hmm. like, you, you, you. Go in there. <laughs> like, every- think about what you've done. Yep. And come yep. back and talk to me in a little bit, right? <laughs> exactly. Yep. And people have been, like, saying they've been having really profound experiences. Mm-hmm. On my ears, like, I was having, and I still do sometimes, like, I'll get, like, a really low vibration. Mm-hmm. It's a, not a hum. It's a weird, weird feeling. And, and it's not like back here. It's like right in here. Okay. And it's a really low vibration. And a lot of people are talking about that. They're mm-hmm. getting that. And um, 
There's a lot of weird shit that I've been feeling. Yeah, I I'm got like, it's gotta be. I got a hum actually earlier today, which is weird because like um I'm Claire audience. Like I get yeah. I get the buzzes and the you know like all the time. Um, Do you get weird like, so, like thoughts that'll just pop in your head? Like what oh, the fuck is that? Is that happening um, to me all the time? I'm like one hundred percent. Yeah, they... yeah. Like um no, I'm I'm. I'm pretty deep into like the psychic stuff and like mm -hmm. um I actually just started doing readings for um money so that's actually pretty cool. But Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And no, so like I'm into like all the clear stuff like random songs will pop up. I've been seeing like angel numbers and double numbers. Yo! Like a mother me too. I look at the clock and it's like 111, 444, yep. 12, 12, 10, 10. I'm like yep. every I mean I can't not see mm -hmm. Yep, same. the stuff I'm seeing, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And like smells, I'll just smell something out of nowhere. Yep. A weird song will pop out of my head and I can't mm -hmm. get it out. And then like, I'll start thinking about something that I don't even like, I'm like, but why am I thinking? Like, that's not even, it wasn't. Yeah. And what I think is really cool is so I'm, I'm like cultivating a bunch of friends that are the same way. And a lot of the time, psychic people have a hard time reading for themselves. So like, if I start mm -hmm. like telling one of my friends something like, She's like, well, this song just popped up in my head. I'm like, that's for me. Thank you. Thank you. And it's true because I have a problem reading myself. Like, I try mm -hmm. to read my own cards, and it's so, like, yeah. I, I'm like, is this meant? Like, how do I yeah. take this? Is this yeah. even meant for me? Or am I reading somebody else through me? Like, yeah. what? So, so I, yeah, it's hard. I'm it's really hard. good with, like, the cards. And I can read my own cards, but, like, um... I'm, I'm read more than energy. I can see energy. I can see like, mm. I can see stuff and I just know it, but I can't look at myself and know it. So, okay. so like having a friend be able to tell it to me. It's, it's you will like, get there. It's taken me a very, very long mm -hmm. time to be able to like, literally like I know where my energy fields are at yeah. and I can't even help them. So like, I will know where my energy fields are, but I don't know why. And okay then it's it's gonna yep. take you a while yep. it's everything all that's gonna take you a while even sometimes i don't even know why but i've learned to figure out when they happen yeah so then i could kind of pinpoint why the next time because maybe it's happening at the same time for the same reason yep. maybe it's an emotional thing maybe it's yeah it's, so you know the, the emotional you know. stuff is what um i'm like what triggers the emotional stuff is what i'm having to learn because like understanding that it's a person doing it whatever i got it all day like that's easy because i can see their energy i understand what's going on with them they're bad for me get rid of them yeah <laughs> like it's the true. stuff that's internal is what what we're working on <laughs> my thing and i've been finding a lot and i said it's so funny because like the little it's the little things like I'll cry at a commercial, like little things. Like I never cried so much at some stupid ass shit as I have. And like, I'll just think about something. And like, I'm like, ah. like, mm -hmm. like songs will come on and I'll start crying at them. Like what the hell is songs what's going on? If there's a TV show and if it's something I've even seen before, still it will hit me like yeah. right in the gut. I'm like, ah. yeah. like you know, <laughs> and like I even watching things, like I'll get like, the energy that's that's yes. yep crazy for me that like i'll be watching tiktok some girl was crying i burst it out the other day I was like oh, yeah or like her. like i felt her whole pain yeah or like i can i'll like hear like somebody talking i just feel their joy and i just start giggling mm -hmm. or like or Someone's like contagious i just laugh yes or like i hate when people tell me about like painful like like physical painful things that, that happens because like it i hurts. feel it hurts i'll cry but then i also feel it in my body yeah. and like i like it hurts <laughs> your whole <laughs> body, which is like, that's an empath, empath thing. It is too. definitely, definitely. Yeah. And it's funny because I, when, when I would smoke too much, I would get like audio hallucinations, but uh -huh. I didn't like what I was getting and I didn't like yep. what I was hearing. Yep. So it was funny. I've learned how to balance because mm -hmm. if I'm going to get them and I don't, now I don't consider them to be audio hallucinations. I consider mm -hmm. them to be more of like an audio, like. Yeah. Message. Yeah. So I really try to like, you know, not because it was really for a second I was getting creeped out. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Why am I thinking yeah. about what am I thinking about? Like really freaked me out. Yes. And uh, but I've learned to like really channel that. And when I started thinking about something or someone, oh my God, what am I my uh my friend that had passed away 
last November, like, dude, he like walked into my room the other night. And I, I remember I, I like said to my friend that I say, call my friend Mia. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, I had the craziest dream about Ronnie last night. Like it was so real. Like he like was there. Mm -hmm. And he was what sent me. It was like th two years ago, maybe three is what originally triggered like the whole, my whole awakening to a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it was stuff that I knew about when I was younger. Like I was, Kay and I were talking mm -hmm. on our interview and I said, you know, it's funny because everything that, that we're learning about and stuff, it's so funny, like we're in school, but everything that we're learning about now, I used to, I knew about the Illuminati and all that shit when I was yep. in fucking high school. Mm -hmm. So this isn't stuff that like, it's new to me. Like I knew about like alchemy and all different, like I've been, this is nothing new. You know, yep. that's why I looked at my parents the other day. I'm like, you want to know why I'm into weird shit? I'm like, patient zero, right? Fucking bear. Yes. I'm like the fucking four yeah. of you. My stepmom was talking about aliens and fucking spirits the other day. Mm -hmm. No, spirits. She was talking about spirits. They were asking if there was ghosts in the house still. And I'm like, can you fucking people wonder why I am the way I am? Yeah, exactly. And like, like when I was little, like my, my grandmother would tell me about like the ghosts that are in her house and like. Yes. And this is why you are the way you are. Yep. Like I used to yeah. watch. I used to watch ghost stories growing up. I would only watch shows that had witches or magic or something Me of that too. order. Guess yeah. what? I still do. I'm still like, I, I, I love it. I love I do. it. I always, like, even though I, I like, have like a hatred for Aly Alyssa Milano because of like her, like, she's just, I feel bad because she's lost. Yeah. But like, ooh, saying Elaine, bitch. But I love Charmed. So uh -huh. it's like a big problem for me. That was one of my favorite shows growing up. Like for me, that was oh, like I grew up great. in my twenties on that. Yeah, it's that it's a like, phenomenal show. Yeah, it's such a the the, the new one sucks. The old one is just the best show mm -hmm. ever. I can still watch every episode in the morning when I, if I'm up and it's on, I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. that's your charm. Name yeah, and like like we were talking about aliens and stuff growing up, and like my parents were like, oh, where did all this come from? Like, like you guys, like exactly. <laughs> and now we have like all these tv shows and youtube and all the stuff of like you know david ike david wilcock and people are like oh the, these people are like uh kooks and i'm like well i never really looked at them like kooks when i was watching them on ancient aliens right exactly yeah ever i was like oh these guys are pretty fucking smart they're, they're talking about some different shit and yeah. and it's crazy because like everything is like stuff that like people are like all now talking about i'm like Turn on ancient aliens, guys. It's all in Dude, there. I love ancient aliens. Like it's you like you can you can say they're as crazy as you want, but like listen to the things that they're saying. A lot of it, like whether you believe it or not, it makes sense. And it's it and makes, it's great food for thought. It is. And if you look, I mean, it's really hard to say that it's not like and I tell people, all right, like my whole opinion, I'm gonna bring this as close as I can so you can see this. I don't know if you saw this when you were when you say it with me. My whole opinion mm -hmm. on that show, right? Mm -hmm. It shows this is the um this is uh uh the Last Supper by Salvatore Dali, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like God overlooking the whole Last Supper and Jesus mm -hmm. and the disciples, right? Yeah. Now you like nobody can tell me after looking at that that people might not have understood what they were looking at back in the day. You know what I mean? After looking at that picture, like could you imagine like if you were sitting there? And like you just seen this like motherfucker energy up in the sky, <laughs> and you're like, oh y'all. Yeah, see you that know shit? what you're looking at. Yeah, y'all see that shit? Like yo, Jesus just fucking made that man walk. Like yeah. there were people that were around for that. See, that's the shit I like because they, even though they'll equate it to aliens, mm -hmm. I also like look at it. Like, okay, I just learned about the council of gods or the divine council of gods, or mm -hmm. it's mentioned in the Bible in mm -hmm. different ways, in different books, God speaks to other gods and it's not singular. It's yeah. very much plural. And it's, it's definitely to me, a clear representation that God created other gods for other reasons, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like, <clears throat> like Norse mythology. I don't feel like it's mythology anymore. I feel like all of it, all of it. Yeah. Like, the, like even like John was saying, well, Odin says there's a creator God. There's a God that oversees everything. Well, that's, if you look in the Bible, it's in there. Right. Mm -hmm. So to me, 
That means it's all real. There's no way that it's not. And back then, and even now, they can call it an alien, but like everything that's not like here or that's not, even everything here is alien. Like it makes no sense. These fucking people are stupid. The terms that they use are ridiculous. Like, okay, so then you look, look, okay, well, we had all these giant beings back in the day because they found like giant skeletons. Well, then you look into the Bible and there's a Nephilim and you look like Uh it's. Yep. In other cultures, they talk about it on ancient aliens. The fucking yeah. Pharaoh and, and all that shit in Egypt is mentioned in the Bible, yet they take mm-hmm. Moses out of it in history. Why? Yeah. yeah. Why and take like, Moses out? All of these mythical like creatures are in every single um religion or yes, you know, teaching. And fucking Pontius Pilate is the in the Bible. Like to, like the, these people are in the Bible that we learned about in high school, but yet, yet they don't teach about the spiritual and the uh, you know the manifestation. Because mm-hmm. if you look at it back in the day when they would say the Lord's Prayer, you're manifesting the powers of God, right? So all yeah. of that chanting, because I yeah. my friend was like, oh, I, you know, she's like she doesn't believe in witchcraft. She's like older or whatever. She doesn't believe yeah. in spells and magic. It's all bad. It's all yeah. But she's also like into new. Uh, she's a Christian, Christian Science, right? Yeah. So I said, okay, so you're going to tell me that praying and saying things out loud mm-hmm. isn't casting a spell. Mm-hmm. Right. You're it, going to tell me exactly, that's not casting a spell. It's exactly the same thing. Like It is. You could say like, negative stuff and curse somebody. You could say yeah. positive stuff and bless somebody. It's all in what you're Witches use it. Them. Native Americans use it. Christianity, literally everybody uses it and everyone it's, it's all the same thing it literally is. and that's why i told people for years like i'm like yo you're i mean to put it on facebook all the time I'm like y'all are doing it wrong you don't even understand mm-hmm. you're doing it wrong i'm like everything that you're hating right now everything that you're hating you're just inviting into your life like, oh completely. like everything that's about to happen possibly in august possibly before then you know what i'm talking about the, uh, <laughs> arizona all that stuff right yeah i see from the beginning everybody like hate and hate and hate and i'm like yo you're gonna get that and you're gonna get it like tenfold and wait and shit's about to get really people like oh you really think shit's about the crazy i'm like tucker carlson talking about like aliens and shit on the news and talking about it being a uh, national security threat i would say maybe a universal security threat if they're gonna really throw that out there and then they're talking about all the stuff that we've been talking about. I'm like, yeah, no, you don't see them lining up for something. Look at all the movies yeah. and stuff they're putting on TV today they've been alone. Up for years now, they are literally preparing us for something. Yeah, today like, alone, Insurrection Day, us. Independence was on. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're literally throwing it in our faces, and then people are going to say that we're crazy until it happens, and... Geostorm. <laughs> yep. They made a movie about it. And people are like, they don't do that. I'm like, what? Cloud yep. seeding. Are you kidding me? I'm like, that's geoengineering people. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. It is. And these people are just so foolish to it. And it's so funny because, like, like most people are like, oh, your interviews have been so different lately. I'm like, well, I could talk to anybody. Any fighter can talk about a fight. Yeah. We could talk about your fight. We could talk about your past fights. We could talk about your upcoming fight. I'm sure you've talked about that and probably are going to talk about that like a lot mm-hmm. in the next couple of weeks. A lot. A lot, yeah. Um, yeah. If so you already like, have it. Also, another example of how they're putting it in our face, the newest Spider-Man. Did you watch it? No. Literally, the bad guy is a fucking hologram. Oh. In the middle of, in the middle of a huge city. Wasn't that in one of the like Avengers or Thors or some shit? One of the big guys was like a fucking. That might be the same guy. It was a hologram. The, the, in those movies, they did a lot of hologram stuff. Now that you're mentioning it, and that's fucking Project Bluebeam. Yep, exactly and what it people is. People don't understand what Project Bluebeam is. They're like it's aliens. I'm like, no, that's a fake alien invasion. But that's not like. Yeah, come on, people. I'm yep. like, that's you really like think? I don't think they're gonna invade us. I honestly think the best my best prediction on our future with aliens is is uh independence insurrection day that's mm-hmm. 
the only place that I could see us going is us taking their technology further. Because, you know, if you really look at like our Air Force's spacecraft and stuff and the stuff, I mean, spacecrafts, they look like them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they really do. And like, I mean, I fully believe that they probably, they already have their fucking, their, their technology. They've already been working on it for years now. They probably already have it, um, like our stuff upgraded and we just don't know it. We're well, not allowed I, to know. I say that to people all the time. Where else uh, are the trillions of dollars going? Where else are they going? They're not going to any, I mean, it's, it's so true. Dude, I watched a thing the other day where they said that like everything that in the movies that they say, like, like, oh, it's just a movie and it's fake. Like it all really exists. Like there really is like um, a King Arthur's sword. There apparently really is like a Thor's hammer. They actually found like a really, really, really old hammer mm -hmm. with like metal that's not like of yep. here. Um, yep. What else is there? Uh, there's just, I mean, endless amounts of stuff to, to me that tell me that there is no way that like they didn't get all this crazy shit from nowhere. Like, all right, um, time travel. People mm -hmm. tell me all the time they think I'm crazy, that I think it's real. I'm like, well, what else do you make Very sense dumb. why people are saying that there is no such thing as Publishers Clearing House with Ed McMahon? Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. That I, interviewed his, uh, I interviewed his adopted son, Lex McMahon, who owns Titan FC. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what you're gonna tell me? I don't, I didn't interview him and he doesn't, did, he was, didn't confirm everything? Like, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Like time travel is very real. You can time travel literally with just using meditation. So if you can use it, if you can do it using meditation, you can do it using technology. You could do it driving down the road. I have literally gone places and been like, how the fuck did I just get to this? Like, like yep. I just drove 10 minutes and don't even know how I got there. Uh huh. I almost got killed in an accident. It was a couple weeks ago. I still do not know how I ended up in the right lane. Wow. Yeah, I put on. and there was a person I, right next to me. I've I've been there before. I've done that. Um, yeah, like especially like driving home to Ohio, like it's four and a half hours away. Sometimes I'm just I'm just there. I I don't yeah. know. It just happened, right? <laughs> and people are like, "Oh, it's this, it's that." I'm like, "Fuck you! You can you can explain everything away all you want to. Yeah. I don't believe in coincidences, and until I meet a unicorn, I don't believe in them yet." I mean, <laughs> until I meet one and you come and yeah. like, show me a unicorn, yeah. I mean, a rhinoceros is the closest thing as to an overweight unicorn that we have. Yeah, and then we have we have narwhals too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are those are ocean. Those are those are water water unicorns. Yes, yes. They're water unicorns. It's so fucking true. It's <laughs> that's the best thing ever. Yo, so the other day. I'm in the bathroom and I don't know if I, oh no, I was cleansing my face and I was looking down, but like while I'm looking down, I am partially like not looking into the mirror, mm -hmm. but rather like I'm seeing like the silhouette of my myself and my eyes were the craziest green I have ever seen in my life. I was like, oh, wow. I'm like, you know, I don't know if my eyes are just fucking with me, but I kept, I, I like did it quite a few times. I'm like, I don't know if my eyes are just looking at me, but shit, I'd love to have those eyes all the time. They're like, like my eyes are green to begin with, but it was like glowing. Yep, Mirror Realm U, that Mirror Realm U had some beautiful ass eyes. Yo, that bitch was glowing. It was great. Her <laughs> eyes, were, my eyes were like literally like light green, like just like fire, like. Yeah, I've I've looked into the mirror before and I've had hazel eyes, which my eyes are dark ass brown. Yes, they are. It makes no sense. Yeah. My eyes were like literally like fluorescent almost. It was weird. Mm -hmm. I've never seen them. Like it was so bizarre. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you seeing that or am I just tripping out? Like I've, I've taken pictures of myself before and my eyes are literally hazel. And like it, I, I don't get it. Like, yeah. and the, the lighting is perfect. Like it's not. It could be your emotions. Cause I remember yes. I went to my friend's house once and I walked in and I was having, I must've been crying about something. And I walked in and she's like, dude, you're freaking me out. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, her eyes are like glowing. She's like, what did you call me? She's like, oh, you're like the daywalker. It was like from Blade. 
I was uh-huh. like, oh, it's like you're so funny. He's just like, no, your eyes are really freaking me out. You have to like go. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Didn't mean to come in here all upset. I'll go home. <laughs> but it's funny. true. And I think that people like, I don't know. I feel like people are going to like manifest more of who they are like i i don't know i was saying the other day like apart from you know my 11s that like i have and like you know everybody is like frowning i'm 42 years old i'm gonna get them but yeah. like i feel like i look like younger than i did last year i am taking care of my skin a little bit better i'm like really making sure every night like i get my makeup off I put, and i don't really wear a lot anyway but yeah like it's so good, good, good to me so have you heard of um saint germain's um saint germain on alchemy no but it's funny because Kay was talking about that the other day that she actually has the book i found the book for six dollars where amazon they were selling it as the first book i bought it used and they sent me the whole book the whole book is about six hundred dollars and i got it for six dollars that's insane. Mm-hmm. But so if you, it touches on it in like probably a thrift store cheap. Probably can because pe- these people don't know what they're selling. They don't really know the value of it. And um, so it actually touches on like how to like keep yourself like your skin looking young forever. And also going back to like what you were talking about earlier um, with like oh, these people, like they knew what they were looking at. It touches on like how exactly god was walking on water it goes ah yeah. i i you know what there to me i believe in all of i believe all of it and people are like you really believe that should happen i'm like fuck yeah i yeah. believe that moses part of the fucking sea i believe it was an energy thing and 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 you know maybe it had something to do with the moon um yep. Yep. i mean Why? i also believe yeah. in like magic i really do i, I believe do too, in yeah. Yeah, I believe that there are people that have powers greater than us, and it could be for a moment, and it could be for a lifetime. Yeah, I I believe so, too. Like, why do you think this book that tells all the fucking secrets is, like, $700? That's insane. Yep. I have and what's also, what's also even wilder than that is um, I found a business card in it of the man who owned it before me, and there was, like, four simple notes written on it. This man grew up, he graduated at a school that is 20 minutes away from where I graduated. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Yeah, I spent a lot of my life in this guy's hometown. So it had to have just fallen into my lap for a reason. That's amazing. What's the name of it? St. Germain's Alchemy? St. Germain on, one, one second, I'll just grab it. Yeah, no, because I was talking to Kay about it, and I really wanted to pick it up, and I just should have written it down. So, you can't even find this. This, this is four books in one, and you can't even find the other books. Um, oh, yeah. Hers, yeah, she showed me She showed me a picture of it um, on Alchemy. On Alchemy for the Adept in the Aquarian Age. It's very hard to find, like, the third and the fourth book. And that's all of them? Yep, it's all of them. It's crazy. I love it. Mm-hmm. My friend might have it. She has a lot of, um, she's a lot of old books. She might have it. And she yeah. has a lot of like really cool stuff. Like she gave me a bunch of books and I was like, hmm, I should talk to her. You should. I should I go have- over to be like, bitch, let's see your library. <laughs> let's I go shopping it. your library. I want it. I have like a full on library going right now. Me too. Well, you've seen mine. I yes. love it. I love yes. it. It's so smart. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Because, like, I have a lot of books that are good to read. I have a lot of books that are simply just for tools. I'm never going to read them front to back, but I can go to them and learn anything at any given point that I need to learn. Yeah. It's so <laughs> smart. I mean, it's, there's nothing better than having like hard hard copy books and I tell people that it's like it's it's a lost art there isn't you know many out there buy them while you can they're trying to you know they're gonna go on for a book burn again it's like so obvious man I have hard copy books I even have a typewriter like I love it I had one I had one it didn't work I have to get I have to get one and I'm gonna get one from like a uh like a yard sale or something Mm -hmm. yeah like a state sale so this is wild um we were just my 
my grandfather passed away last year and um maybe it was two years ago we were we're going through his house to um you know demolish it and everything and i found a typewriter in there that nobody else had seen until i walk through i find a typewriter i look this typewriter up and it's literally two thousand dollars that's amazing <laughs> and it's in like perfect shape still that's amazing grandparents keep the coolest shit they do. They, they really do. do. You can find so much cool stuff, like at a moving sale or an estate sale. That that's the mm -hmm. best way to do. You mm -hmm. get some really, really because people again, like they don't know what they're getting rid of, and sometimes they just get rid of it to simply get rid of it. They're like, ah, yeah, it. yeah. Fuck yeah. I don't need this. It's taking up space. They don't need it. They don't know how much it's worth. Get rid of it. Yeah. It's so, so true. true. It's so true. And you know, now I want to get into your fight. Okay. We didn't get to talk about that at all. We've been vibing okay. on everything else, and I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I am so excited for you. This is going to be now. Where is it being held? And it's going to be on Axis TV mm -hmm. for the first time ever. Yeah. So this is the first show that Invicta is ever having on Access, and I'm the co-main event. Um, it's going to be in Kansas City at Fight Church. Who is the main event on that card? I don't know. It's another title fight. I believe it's for 145. Ooh, that's been well not yeah it's been vacant for a long time or just did they did they give it does pam have it um i'm looking it up right now oh Hold wait on. maybe it, maybe it's not 145 then um i'm bad with my weights that aren't 105 or 115. i don't fucking blame you i didn't even i i honestly only know that you're on the card so i didn't even really <laughs> <laughs> i'm the only adam weight fight on the card Oh, good for you. That's even better. I like Thank that. You. I like that you're being highlighted. Oh, you know what's really cool? They have, um, oh, here it is, April 21st. They have an article about it. Um, they, there's three girls or two girls from Invicta that are now fighting on PFL. Oh, Before that's PFL. awesome. Yeah, I was really excited yeah. to see that. I'm like, ooh. And maybe that's because when Kayla fought for maybe, you know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. smart. Yeah. But Jen is good like that too. She'll let you guys kind of like. She will. Fight, she'll know. let us, she'll let us fight for other promotions and then come back. Um, I like that. Yeah. Um, Shannon is, is really, she, she's an amazing boss. Like um, we had a press conference, like a zoom call with literally all of the girls from Invicta, like, it's a family we can we can put in our that. ideas and our opinions and like i love it yeah i love that let's see so it doesn't have the fight card up yet i don't think um oh yeah we got we did wrong yep yep we got karina rodriguez versus diana uh Torc uh torcado i pronounce that probably terribly again you and jessica delboni and uh, mm -hmm. oh, this is this will be fun to watch. Emily Dakota and uh, Liz Tracy, then Tanisha Tennant. She'll, that'll be fun. Hope Chase. Yeah. Uh, Hope Chase. I love the energy that she brings to the show. Oh, Fatima Climbs fighting on that card. That'll be good. She's fighting Ar Ariana Melendez. I'm excited also to see who just Ar Aaron Blanchfield got signed by uh -huh. UFC. Yeah, that's exciting. I'm excited for her. For her. Yeah, she's gonna do really good over there. Mm -hmm. Um, who is Hope fighting? Hope is fighting Tanisha Tennant. Oh shit! Okay, I'm also a fan of Tanisha. Um, yeah. So that's really exciting. I'm not gonna be able to watch the fight, but I need to watch it back because I'm a fan of both of them. Yeah, no, that's gonna be a really, really, really fun yeah. fight to watch. I'm excited. I'm excited about the whole card. I think it's gonna be really, really great. And I think there's a lot of room again now with like you know, a couple of the fighters making the move over to UFC. I mean, I, at the end of the day, I think for for a person like, um, especially because they have the division over there, uh, mm -hmm. for Erin to do that, to move over to what, she's like flyweight, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Flyweight. And mm -hmm. eventually she'll be a really good fight for Valentina. Eventually. Yeah, I agree. And like, uh, it's... I've been waiting for the 115 pound belt to be fought for. And Emily Ducati was supposed to fight. Um, she just fought in Invicta. She was a she's a wrestler. Um, Mexican girl. I, don't I can't remember. remember. I know what you're talking Just about. Yeah. I, oh, really, really good. 
Yeah. Uh, one of the girls with the next tattoos went over to PFL. That's so funny. Okay. I, don't think it's um, I was waiting Imagine. for them to fight because I wanted to call out the winner. So this way I could fight win the 115 belt as well and now seeing that emily is fighting on the same card as me but she's not fighting for the title is upsetting <laughs> yeah no that's really crazy now let's see who's gonna be who i wonder who's gonna be fighting for the strobe title like that's that's really that'll be exciting for you and i you know what i think why not mm -hmm. why not has never had a chance yeah. No, and we don't, um, women, it gets, it doesn't get easier for us, uh, when we get older. I, I mean, I'm a freak of nature, so I can say that, but, um, it doesn't really get easier for us. Most women, especially balancing, like, you know, our periods and stuff, it makes it really hard. That's a yep. really big, um, uh, yeah, that yeah, really it, makes it tough it, and people, guys don't get that. <laughs> It always happens to fall right around my fight, sometime right around my uh, weight cut, and it makes cutting weight terrible. Like, the, if, if it's the week before, like, I'm not losing weight the week before. If it's the week of, like, I'm not, like, it's hard to lose weight the week of, so uh, yeah. it's, it's not fun. <laughs> People don't understand that, and that's why, like, a guy will miss weight, and I give them shit, and a girl mm -hmm. misses weight, and I don't give them as much shit, because I'm like, you yes. guys don't understand what it what it like also entails with water weight and all the other shit that comes along with being a female you throw hormones into that and yep yep it makes it hard yeah and it's not that we don't try <laughs> you know what i mean like the guy like yep. it's so crazy like they, you know when guys get on girls i'm like yo you try fucking packing an over some ovaries in, in, in the uterus and that motherfucker and tell me yep. how it is it ain't easy yeah. And we're supposed to, we just naturally have more body fat, so it makes it harder. Um, yeah. I'm lucky because I've put on a lot of muscle um, over the past year. So, like, cutting weight has actually been easier, and I've been able to cut from higher numbers and do it easier. That's awesome. But, I mean, I am getting older, so cutting weight, is it, it's been harder to diet down. It's just not fun either. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Why not? If you could, it's like, eat eat a little bit more of what you like if I fight at 115. Yeah. You no have... matter who you fight, you're usually the smaller girl anyway in that Always. respect. So it's not Always. gonna change much. And there are tons of one fifteen uh pound girls that are not uh very tall. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah, like there like there are girls who are like five foot, five one. I'm like, okay, I'm only four eleven. Virtually that's that's not that different. That, that's pretty no. identical, you know? Like, um, yeah, that's not a big difference at all. Oh, yeah. would you do if they did like a strawway tournament? Would you do the tournament? Yes. yes. You're built for that. Mm -hmm. I'm You're definitely built, built for that. that. Being a wrestler, I can go in, I will give my everything for five minutes, I'll go backstage, I will come out even better. And I can do that yeah. all day long. I definitely, I, I would love to see you be able to do one of their tournaments for that reason alone. You know, I wish mm -hmm. PFL would open up more of uh, women's divisions and maybe throw in the mm -hmm. weights in there because PFL has that has the tournament, um, the, yeah. like actual tournament, like how Invicta yeah. is style uh, fight cards, whereas to Bellator's tournaments are not done on one card. It's done on, yeah. you know, di yep. multiple cards. So it's a little I... different. like... I enjoy I enjoy the one day tournaments. Like it's, it's like cool. a rest, it's like a wrestling event for me. It's like a jujitsu event. I'm built for this. Um I think I it's a lot to, of fun. And then I only have to cut weight once. Like it makes it so much easier. I'm a tournament I'd rather I mean, just from shooting pool as a competitor, I love 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 mm -hmm. getting a tournament done like a one day to I three day yeah. tournaments, whatever it is what it is tiring more than anything doing a three-day tournament and not that like doing a tournament for like quite a few hours isn't like tiring as well but yeah. you know when you're going out there and you're it's not the same but it was funny because john uh laughs because like he said that's when he he wanted to coach me because mm -hmm. i gassed out uh, it was like mm -hmm. oh my gosh i can't even tell you how many hours we were playing a pool in the tournament that i threw it was just mm -hmm. hours and hours and hours and i played like 30 something games of pool that's insane. and I was like, my arms gassed the fuck out by the yeah. like, I was in the, the co main event technically. It was in the, I was in the uh, yes. finals 
And I fucking was like, I looked at my 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 uh, partner. I was like, dude, I'm really sorry. Like, I have nothing left. Yeah, that's left a lot of arms. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a lot of arms and mental. Like, that's that's a lot. It is. People don't understand it until like I'm like, yo, you play 30, 30 games of pool, and it was really funny because it was pool players and fighters and watching like the mental, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. fortitude of fighters. And watching them like not be able to handle not being able to shoot, it was really funny. It was actually really funny. I was like, I heard one of my guy was like, "Yo, did you really just say if you miss one more pool, you're done? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Would you say that if somebody was like throwing kicks at you?" Fuck no. Fuck I'm gonna quit no. in the corner. Bye. <laughs> in all fairness, I was playing his team. It was him and my coach. In all fairness. And I wore a cute outfit on purpose and I shoot exceptionally well at pool and you could throw like the hottest guy in front of my face and it's not going to do anything. Like I'm like, whatever. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, there's that's... no distractions. And yeah. he was literally so distracted. It was so funny. I actually felt bad, but then I was like, fuck this. If this was a fight, he wouldn't feel bad. No. No. <laughs> kick your ass on the table. You kick my ass in a cage. There you go. It's so true, though. It's so true. I've actually played pool with, like, one of my friends. We used to go and play. Mikey, you know him. We used to play all the time. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first time we went to play, he's like, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to kick your ass. I'm like, don't be that person. <laughs> like, don't, yeah. don't be that person. I don't want to I don't want to destroy you. And he's like, what right. do you think you're going to win? I'm like, I've been playing since I was 21. I'm like, I'm 41 <laughs> this is last year. I'm like, it's 20 years of playing pool. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, plus before I competed and I was actually just played pool because I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I played pool since I was a little kid. Like when we went to hotels, instead of like, you know, playing like ring and run like the rest of the idiots, I was downstairs in the pool room in the arcade. Oh, that's great. Um, in our, yeah, all, every time, every time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, oh, it's so funny. And it, I remember playing them the first time and he was like, holy shit. He's like, this is ridiculous. He's like, there's like no reason to even play you. I'm like, no, you're great practice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't don't let me not practice. I need that, and I like that's teaching funny. people. That's great. Practice. Yeah, yeah. Like you like teaching, and it's it's. Mm-hmm. I feel like as a competitor, I'm playing with a hanger. I feel like as a competitor, I'm playing with a hanger on the floor. It's so great to keep teaching because you keep mm-hmm. on brushing up on oh you know, completely the little yeah. things, the fundamentals, the stuff that like yeah. you know kind of drips yeah. your wayside after some time. And what's funny is I've realized that when I'm in fight camp and I'm teaching, like whether I'm, so like I have these two sisters that I give privates to once really little and I've been giving her more privates than the other one lately and she's a total badass. But like I've realized I teach them the stuff that I'm working on, like that I'm currently oh, that's trying, awesome. trying to add into my fight game and perfect. Like I teach them that. So this way I'm understanding it like at a different level. So like I'm yeah, teaching my you're girls. perfecting it. Yep. So then my women's mixed martial arts class, most of the time I'm teaching them stuff that I'm currently trying to implement. So I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love it. Well, you're practicing it more and more and more. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, it can't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. It cannot hurt. They can only mm-hmm. help. I mean, mm-hmm. shit. So you're fighting on the 21st. Mm-hmm. You're the co-main event. This is no, yep. no news to you. You're, uh, you know, you've done this. Uh, you've been uh, under the highest pressure that you can Mm -hmm. as a fighter. Uh, I know that we had talked about you possibly going to the Olympics, but you know, this year was not going to happen. And I don't think the next one is, and I really wouldn't want to see you go over there anyway, at this point. Yeah. At this this point, I'm kind of over it. I I have some other stuff that I want to do in life. Um, I have other paths for myself set up. Um, I'm very excited to fight Jessica Delboni. Uh, she called me out, um, in my last fight, so. I love it. And I'm sure there's a lot of ha ha out of girls chomping at the bit waiting to get that title shot. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, there, I could only imagine. Yeah. Like, the target's on my back now, and I'm okay with that. Well, I mean, I, I, you're not new to pressure. No. You know what I mean? No. So, like, I don't see that being a hindrance. I feel like, if anything, that's going to, like, elevate your game to oh, know that. Completely. 
Like, um, at this point, I'm not really training to be better than anybody other than myself. I, I know that it. I love it. I know that I'm the best in at least in the country. I at one point I would like to bring Ayaka Hamasaki over here into America to fight me so this way I can prove that I'm the best in the world. But um, like until... didn't you already win in Kung Wan in China? In China, yep. Yep. Um, kind of feel like you proved you were pretty fucking uh, the best yeah, in the world at that I, point. Just I saying. would like to fight Ayaka before she retires though. Just just wanna Why just not? Wanna... Then. Yeah, I mean, you could do it in Invicta. Invicta would would, mm-hmm. would g- give you one of those, and so would Bellator. I mean, those are two. Or or is does she fight for? Ryzen? She fights for Ryzen. Yeah, and perfect. Ryzen and Invicta have a good relationship. They they do, and that's Invicta why I fighters, threw Bellator in there because yeah. they all have a pretty mm-hmm. good working relationship, which is mm-hmm. funny. I like that. Yeah, yeah, and so like I was saying, like I'm. I'm not trying to be better than anybody else. Um, I'm trying to be better than the me that stepped in the cage last time. Um, I know that the me that stepped in the cage last time would have would have beat Jessica Delboni. So I'm going to come out as a newly evolved fighter and I'm just going to show what I got. I've, I've studied her. My coaches have studied her. We know the flaws in her game. And I, I know that I can win this fight at anywhere. You, you've proven it. You've proven that you're only getting better. Every fight, you're getting better. You're evolving. Uh, your stand-up's gotten exponentially better. Uh, you've gotten exponentially better at mixing it in with your ground game, which is just flawless, mm-hmm. uh, especially with your last finish. Thank you. Thank still you. That. that was still awesome. If you want to talk about that for a second. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was the first Von Flu finish in the history of Invicta, and it was for a title fight, and if you go back and you watch it, the only um, commentator that knew I had it was Julie Kedzie. Everybody else was saying, that, oh, Ashley Cummins has this guillotine. Yeah. It looks like the guillotine's getting pretty deep, and you hear Julie saying, Alicia has nope. a Von Flu. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure Alicia's very, very aware of this Von Flu. It looks like she's, it looks like Ashley's about to tap. And then she tapped. And what's funny is I wasn't going to use that Von Flu to finish her. I was going to use that to pass, but I felt her giving up. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to finish this fight with a Von Flu. Who the fuck would have thought not? that? <laughs> and it's so funny because now, like, having watched that and, like, you can use it to pass. But then if you're there. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? I've actually literally like John and I were training and I landed. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. this is right here. Holy shit. Uh-huh. I'm like, I didn't yeah. even and realize like, that. He's like, dude, he's like, sometimes you're just like, it's, you don't realize it. He's like, but yeah, yeah with, especially with that pass, it's literally right there. Yeah. And like, um, so the round before I finished her, um, you couldn't hear what I was saying in the corner, but the round before that I destroyed her on the ground and I looked at my coach and I told him, I'm going to finish her on the ground. She does not like it. She's breaking. Yeah. And then literally within like the first minute and a half, I, I subbed her. Cause so also great. the round before that, as soon as I shot, she threw a guillotine and I was like, you know what? Yeah. If she do- I thought in my head, I was like, if she does that again, I'm going to Von flew her. She did it again. I, and I was it. like, all right, let me take it. And- Cause it's there. <laughs> hmm. Exactly. It's always a risk with a guillotine. Yep. Always mm-hmm. a risk. Always. They say if you don't get the guillotine, abandon it quick because you're going to get a <laughs> Uh-huh. And um, Ashley's a brown belt, so I figured that, she, like, I respected her grappling. I figured that she would let go of it. But um, I guess I just, I had it good. <laughs> I had. You I, did. You I had, had it was. really good. Yeah. You um, had it really good. Yeah. And then, um, so I actually grappled with one of the girls that, um, that Jessica Delboni um, grappled in a live match um, in a super fight with. I grappled with her, and um, which was um, Nikki Sullivan. I grappled with her in preparation for this. Um, awesome. I flew out Christian Woodmansey. I flew out Tisha Torres, and mm. Tisha helped exploit. So I think that this is where my leveling up came from and where it is going to ultimately fall back on. I brought Tisha Torres out and she was able to exploit the holes in my game in the comfort of my own gym in five rounds and then in three rounds. So I was able to like 
if, if you want to take it this way, like between my two fights, I had a loss in the middle. I had yeah. something that showed me that I need to level up. I need to change. So I was able to do this in the comfort of my own gym with one of the best in the world. So Literally. I also flew out Tisha Torres. Um, Chelsea Legrassi came out. Um, I have a another couple of guys coming out and training with me as well. So and then I'm also I'm sparring with John Chalbeck almost every Thursday, and I work I with him it. twice a week. Um, I'm working with James Gray all the time. Like. You gotta tell everybody I said hi. I've like not seen anybody. In, it feels like for fucking ever, but I will. I yeah, know. And I, well, hopefully you guys do the ladies camp one. You know, soon we are. We're setting it up. That I'm gonna have to come out for. I'm gonna drag John and be like business trip. You can stay in yes. the, uh, the guest quarters. Yes, and James will be so excited to have you out he loves you especially because like whenever i say anything about you he's like oh my god she's like the biggest supporter of you she's phenomenal like he only says good stuff about you and then Yo, of course, you know what was the really funniest John. Hmm? he was so funny i'll never forget he was talking about it must have been about the conspiracies and he would put, put a post out and he said if somebody can like prove any of this to me that would be great <laughs> So I put up a clip of Sydney Powell speaking. She had a, a talk and it was called How to Fix Politics. As ever. I, I didn't know that was what it was called. Mm -hmm. It was just a clip of it. And it was her talking about the laptop and um, what she would do with it if she was the president of the United States and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I put it in there and he's like, but how do you know that's her? And I'm like, well, I know Sydney Powell's voice. And he's like, but how do you know? And I'm like, I'll get you the original video. And he's like, if yeah. you can find the original video, He's like, I'll believe you. I'm like, give me a second. Because he thought it was a dubbed and a voiceover. Yeah, yeah. So I go on YouTube and I'm hunting and I'm hunting and I'm, I'm a journalist. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I investigate. I'm hunting, yeah. I'm hunting. And so I started putting in things she said and maybe yeah. that would. And yeah. boom, I put in a couple of little phrases that she said, Sydney Powell, and it came up, how to fix politics at Harvard University. Wow, okay. So okay. I dropped the entire video, which was an hour and change. Uh -huh. in the comments and he literally was like holy shit he's like you're the first person that's come at me with facts and mm -hmm. back them up i'm like mm -hmm. i'm not gonna come and sit here and talk shit if i don't know what i'm talking about yes, and bring something definitely. to the table like i'm bringing the breakfast dessert and dinner like get ready <laughs> <laughs> that's phenomenal because like james james you can talk to him about like anything but like you yep. have to have factual stuff you you yeah. gotta know your shit because James knows his shit. Yeah, he literally was like, it was so funny. He was so shocked that I was able to fight because he really thought it was dubbed. But like, no, that's really Sydney Powell. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. like, I can promise you that. And it's funny because that, like, ultimately is what got me in a lot of trouble. Was I was putting up real hard evidence. Like I was putting up court cases. I was putting up PDF files. I was. I'm like, but it's out there. Like, yeah. that's the thing. It's out there. It's not Completely. easy to find half this shit. Like, I said to my dad, I was like, yo. I'm like, all right, so you want to tell me everything that I'm saying is wrong? Because, like, he was like, well, what do you think about, you don't like, you know, this one, that one. He's like, what about John McCain? I'm like, piece of shit. He's like, what about John McCain? Piece of shit. I went to the line. I'm like, they're all pieces of shit. And he's like, he's a war hero. I'm like, he's a fucking terrorist and a piece of shit. And you don't fucking put to death a war hero. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, John McCain was executed. He's like, how do you know? I'm like, I'll show you his indictment right here. So I mm -hmm. pulled up his indictment. I'm like, would you like to see it? Or would you like to watch Chris Cuomo talking about it on CNN? So since Chris Cuomo talked about it and it was on Clinton News Network, that means that it's true, right? <laughs> so he sat there and I played him the video and it was like a 17 minute video or some shit. Mm -hmm. so, I like, so I took me another 15 minutes to find mm -hmm. this small video clip of him saying, well, they just put John McCain to death two minutes ago. Okay, so I have a question. Do they put people to death or animals? Wow. Yeah. Do they put people to death or do they put to animals to, to death? They're supposed you don't put to... people down. Yeah, no. You're not supposed to be able to. No. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's very easy from there to look at the pictures of his funeral and see that his flag on his casket was wrinkled. You mm -hmm. do not put an nope. imperfect flag nope. on a person of that stature's casket unless they were dishonorable. Yep. Mm -hmm. RBG, 
look at her. Same thing. I was the first person to point it out. People were like, holy shit. I'm like, that is not perfect quick at all by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, that is, that's huge. I didn't even, I didn't even realize that. Like, I mean, I knew that like, you don't, you don't wrinkle the flag. Like, that's yeah. Just- Oh yeah, out. well that was like the military when they turned their back at the inauguration. You don't do that. It's like not allowed. No, no. You're not literally. Oh, they didn't do that. Yes, the fuck they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, off camera, I'll tell you a bunch of shit that I heard. Like okay. off camera, I mean, there's military people that are saying, "Yo, you guys better get ready because shit's not coming from like other. Co- it's coming from up mm-hmm. there next." You know what I mean? Like, there are people talking about that. Like. That's the worry. Yeah. That's why we have the rods of God. That's why they did Space Force. Oh, the original perfect. flag was black, too. The original Space Force flag was black with gold fringe, and then they made it white, uh, white dark to light, kind of funny. Wow. I didn't, I didn't know that. I literally have picked up on so many weird things. I actually watched... There was a guy, I don't know where he got interviewed, but he's a general valet. It's, I'll, mm-hmm. I can't pronounce the way I'll, I'll find it for you. I have the video where he was confirming everything that we were talking about, like confirming mm-hmm. the letter we can't say. The number yeah. that's such a big fucking bad. Confirmed yep. it all and said it's actually like 800 military people. It's not like. Really? Now, what I think, if you want my personal opinion, because like he did a lot of executive orders on like trafficking and Mm -hmm. you know people don't realize he did one on quantum like research and energy and quantum really oh so we're talking quantum mechanics okay Mm -hmm. that was an executive order didn't know that one on 5g i wonder why unless it was like to make a five safe safe stuff right right um so there's no way that we're like there were reasons you know what i mean and i think that like we've had other stuff with that before but think about it quantum what letters mm-hmm. does that begin with right so my thought i always thought it was a quantum computer that people ran mm-hmm. which okay. actually brings up the theory and i watched a video on it and it was a theory of um what is it project uh looking glass yeah yep heard of it yep it's pretty much a theory of that. And it, okay. they say that it comes from, there's the theory of the boxes of Orion, which are like three different boxes, kind of like the mother boxes and all that, like those stories, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and then there's like the theories of like, um, like it being a Stargate and all sorts of crazy shit. Like I want, this video was really awesome. And it was mm-hmm. probably the most profound and compelling video on time travel and the invention of it well you'll you'll have to like send me it because i it's amazing. Like, love that i love that stuff it's i it was long and i just couldn't even put it down i was like holy shit now i need to go and find these people like who are they yeah where did they, become? I, where did they come from where i'm is the type it? of person i that that move that video could be like five hours long but if it is if i want to know it i'm gonna sit there the entire time oh yeah and you know what it was comparing a lot of stuff to like the movie um and it did like it, the alien, uh, the Independence Day insurrection. Like I just watched that, so like I can actually take things like the spear, whatever that thing in that movie, mm-hmm. like that definitely. Yeah. Like I was like, oh fuck, this is screaming shit that we're like learning about. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's just insane when you think about it, mm-hmm. and you look at like what they're doing, and the, again the programming. The oh my god, they're programming it. us so hard for everything so in your face and like that's been my biggest thing is deprogramming myself like i had to it took a long time yep i actually i don't watch tv anymore i don't i don't have television i don't watch the news um like hardly listen to music because i feel like it's programming really that that makes sense um so i've been getting into like a lot of like so as of lately, I've been listening to Mod's son a lot lately because he's very um, manifestation, all of that stuff. Like on his twenty, is it like four thirty two? Is he? Is, is it like uh, um, that hurts? Mm, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not too deep into it. Um, so look into has, that. Okay. So um, some of his newer music, he might 
be into some stuff that like maybe you shouldn't be but i'm listening to all this older stuff like his 2015 album he literally has a five-part book on his album where it literally just tells his life story and how he manifested everything and it. it is phenomenal like i cried at every single chapter of the book <laughs> i love that <laughs> I love that. I've had books make me cry. They're the best ones. Yeah. I love that. I, yeah, so I've, there's so many. Yeah. I've, so I've only been listening to music that's actually like about like, a, you know, like the shit that like I believe in Good because stuff. realistically, I don't know who is trying to put what into my mind. Like, um, yeah. I went through and I deleted like all of the bass nectar, all of like, I deleted most of the tool. I deleted a lot of stuff off of I've deleted a lot of music recently too like I'm like this just is not yep I don't feel good yep when I listen to it and I don't get road rage anymore I don't get angry on the roads anymore I'm not like I'm happy I'm I'm usually just listening to me and rocking out to nothing and I'm fine it's like I'm never been happier when i was listening to like radio music and shit i was like what is wrong Why am i, I won't listen to the radio like no, like i said like i won't garbage i won't music. watch the news so i will not listen to the fucking radio the news i was just garbage i tell everybody the, yeah. the news is just bad why do you want to watch it it's just bad 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 yeah. bad 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 there's nothing good on it mm -hmm. yeah i would rather listen to nothing yeah reality is yeah rea like like the, the reality of some shit right now is like don't need the news like this is good mm -hmm. enough <laughs> Oh, completely. TikTok's great. I don't need anything anymore. Like, I yo, TikTok. I have no need for any, like, I don't, I was over, like, the celebrity gossip years ago, but, like, I don't, like, TV shows, I'm sorry, TikTok's better. <laughs> These people are so much more fun. Yeah. Um, Dude, Netflix has been, like, they've been putting out so many shows that are, like, really relevant to a lot of shit that we're in. Today. I heard Netflix is, like, red pilling on my car. They are. Like, they're they're red pilling like a motherfucker right now. A lot of like honestly, if you really like look at everything right now, it's like twenty twenty one is the biggest red pill ever. Mm -hmm. Oh, completely. And it just started because they had Q into the storm and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh so they're red pilling the fuck out of everybody right uh -huh. now. Yeah, there's I couldn't do that of... good of a job. <laughs> there's a lot of like alien shows out. There's um. There's a lot of shows out about magic right now, like just randomly. I know. Yeah. I actually just saw one with it's it's like four guys that are friends that are doing something mm -hmm. about magic, but that's like their illusionist magic, which is different. Okay, yeah. So I saw that, but then there's also ones that are just like there's one a lot of come things coming out about like fucking witches and just like all that type of stuff. I love um, it. Yeah. I love yep. it. I can't really think of any other specifics right now, but they're red pilling a lot. Like C Spiracy. Well, C Spiracy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. There's so much, but it's good. It needs listen, it needs to be happening because like at this mm -hmm. point, like people can't allow the shit to go on. What's going on? It can't it just no. No. it can't. And I said to someone the other day, I'm like, listen, you know, you want cut it out. My cat's being an asshole. <laughs> um I could hear her scratching at my sister's door. Um, she fucked up my train of thought. Stop it! Sorry, <laughs> you know, the black and white one. She's good. like, I don't want her to wake my sister up. Um, I don't even know what I was gonna say, but I am so excited for your fight. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait I... to watch it. Stop it! I can't wait to see what the future has in store for you and everything that's gonna happen because we know that you're gonna you're gonna keep that title for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And everything that you want is going to come true. We're having, this is like a TikTok session. Oh, it's so funny. Thank you. <laughs> like we're going to manifest everything. And it's oh, going to be an you. awesome life. <laughs> thank you. Oh, my gosh. I am so excited. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm manifesting every day. And I feel like I have a very good path set out in front of me. And I'm just you excited. You too. And is there anybody you want to give a shout out to? So I want to give a shout out to um, specifically James Gray, um, John Trowbeck, Mary Vance, and um, Chris Down, Hillary Down, and Tabitha Watkins. And um, then all of my sponsors, I am sorry that I can't think of all of them right now. I just posted about them. I have a lot of sponsors and I have a big team that's always that, that's always uh, here to support me. So I'm very thankful for all of them. 
You do. You actually have a great support system with Team Hand Fight. And I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see you fight May 21st Thank for you. Victor FC 43 or maybe one on access. We're going <laughs> to figure out exactly which, which one it is. But you are the co-main event and we're super excited to see you retain your title against Jessica Delboni. And is there anything else you want to say before we go? Um, next time we're going to do one, it's going to be more of a girl chat with all the girls. And okay. I mean, really, this was a girl chat too, but like, it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> um, just uh, follow me. Keep up with me. I'm, it's at Alicia Zap on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. Just type my name in. You'll find me. Awesome. Awesome. And it was great to catch up with you. Oh my gosh. It was so good. Round table going. It was so good catching up and I cannot wait for a round table. I know. I'm so excited. I am. I cannot wait. And I will uh, send this to you uh, okay. when it's like fully uploaded because it takes yeah. a little while after the live is done. Yeah. And um, tomorrow it should be up on iTunes and then we'll get that going. Hopefully Yay. Maybe we'll do that. We'll set it up for after your fight so you could get you know unless you want to do it before it's up to you all right uh probably after my fight yeah yeah i think that would be really I, I good like that's to, you could get your i'd like to, I'd like to get a little high yes <laughs> perfect i think that's perfect and it'll be so much fun i'm so yeah. excited all right girly have a great evening we will talk Thanks. soon and again get ready get excited because this year is going to be great and i can't wait to see you fight on the 21st thank you thank you for having me it was awesome catching up it's always a blast it's always a blast you're welcome thank you for coming on I'm of so course excited. anytime anytime <laughs> love you girl love you too bye honey bye